Man, we took a big we took a big hit today. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Today, yeah, we or this week we took a big hit, man. Shout out to Dr. Tony Evans and all of his his whole family and that whole church, man. I'm just my heart goes out to him. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is this is tough. This is tough. I'm I'm literally surrounded. This house is filled with things that he wrote and. When should a pastor step down from ministry? That's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned. Recently, Dr. Tony Evans has stepped down from his position as senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Dr. Tony Evans is a famous, incredibly talented monumental soldier for Christ. I mean, I, I'm at a loss of words right now. One of our subscribers reached out to me and in light of this news and really asked a video, asked me to do a video on when pastors should step down from ministry, when pastors are disqualified. Before I get to that, I want to say a couple words about Dr. Tony Evans. Um, we don't know why he stepped down in his letter he said that he did not exercise righteous judgment which can mean a lot of different things and i really do hate how people are really speculating some of the worst things possible like adultery fornication spiritual abuse uh we just don't know and so there's nothing we can say about specifically what he was doing what he went through or if someone was hurt but what we do know is that he has a group of elders and the group of elders together including him decided to share what they shared and decided that they did not need to share everything about what was going on uh, so we should really leave it at that we should pray for him he still is a pastor and a soldier for christ being a pastor is a thankless job, honestly. I mean, you have just an unending expectation to give. You have uh, overwhelming scrutiny when you get things. You have anything that's nice. If you do anything that other people don't think is right. Um, I mean, this is why in James 3.1, it says that not all should become pastors because we are under harsher scrutiny. And that's so true in every area of our lives and everything that we do, we are criticized more than anybody else. And it is a noble task, but it is not an easy one. So I really do want you to pray for your pastors, those that are tending to your spiritual needs. I can't tell you how much easier our lives are made when people listen to us trust us that what we're doing is for their benefit uh for the betterment of the body for the glory of jesus uh, but i do want to talk a bit about when a pastor should step down i myself had to step down uh for some time after my mother passed i started noticing that and you know, i was easily angered um, and I just couldn't, I didn't have the emotional fortitude to deal with all the things I was dealing with naturally because I lost my mother. Uh, you know, I was, I had a therapist at the time who told me that I really do need to take a break and I was doing too much. So I took a 12 week sabbatical where I left. I was the leader of the young professional singles group. And I told them, I ain't gonna lie, like that was sad telling them. They were, oh man, I remember their faces and everybody's, yeah, everybody, oh man, it was, it was rough because I, I had to, we were at a bowling night and I had to say, you know, uh, I'm gonna be taking some time off. And, and it's funny, they never let me forget it. They like, remember that time? Yeah, you remember, you know, I think that was that time when you had your 12 weeker. They tell, they call it a 12 weeker. You know, your 12 weeks? It always remind me of my 12 weeks. Remember the 12 weeks you left us? <laughs> I mean, it's all in good fun. 
when should a pastor step down from ministry? And I only want to go through two things. Well, more than two things. First thing I want to say, I did a video about spiritual abuse that I will click right link right here. If you are a pastor and you're guilty of any of the things that I talked about in that video, or you are going to a church where your pastor is guilty of any of the things I talked about in this video, you need to go and you need to step down because the people that have been given to you are not yours. They're God's. And God has entrusted them to you to tend to, to take care of, not to lord over, not to control. Uh, and so if you are spiritually abusing the people that God has placed in your care, then you most certainly need to step down. The most on point scripture about being a pastor and living up to the pastoral mission and the call is 1 Timothy 3. And I'm going to walk through this and hopefully that I, I'm hoping that I'm not talking to myself years from now or whatever, uh, because one thing that this Dr. Tony Evans reminded me of is that all men fall short of the glory of God. And each of us is underneath this strict judgment. And all of us could need to step down at one point or another. It is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. An overseer then must be, now key in on the must, it must be above reproach. Above reproach means beyond scrutiny. Like you're not doing anything that would incur criticism from people outside the church or people inside the church. This is why pastors can't do a lot of things that other people can do. This is why a pastor can't go to a pride parade unless he's there to share the gospel in some form. Obviously share the gospel in some form. If you over there waving a rainbow flag, half naked with uh, tassels coming from your nipples, I think you're going to have some issues. Also, I'm a single pastor. And let's say I'm dating a young lady and she comes over to my house late at night and leaves the next morning. That would not be above reproach. Now, just because she's at my house overnight does not mean we have sinned. I have a spare bedroom. I have a couch that I could sleep on and she could sleep in my bed. It doesn't necessarily mean that we sin, but the idea is that invites scrutiny. Why is a pastor having this woman that's not his wife over at his house late at night? Um, and so to be above reproach, I shouldn't and wouldn't do any of these things. The husband of one wife. So that means he can't be trying to have two or three or four wives. It also doesn't mean that he needs to be married. All right. Apostle Paul wasn't married. All right. I'm surely other apostles were single, but it doesn't necessarily mean he has to be married. It's just if he's married, he's only married to one woman. Temperate means, means that he's even headed. Like he doesn't, he's not quick tempered. He doesn't quickly get angry. He can control his emotions. And the next one is self-controlled. Self-control literally means he has complete control of himself. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. So if a man is unable to control himself, either his anger his drunkenness or his liquor uh, or, you know, or his ability, his alcohol consumption, his sexual desire, then he should really step down from ministry because a pastor must be in control, respectable, hospitable. So he should treat others with kindness. He should be giving. He should be hosting. He should be willing to host people skillful in teaching, meaning he can teach the word of God and he has studied and he has shown approved. This is one of the biggest reasons why someone should step down. If they have fallen into the snare of the devil in some false teaching or false doctrine, if they're chasing after myths, 
and legends, if they're chasing, if they, if they're teaching that we are no longer free from the law, they should step down immediately. Again, he's not a drunkard, so he doesn't mean he can't drink at all. It just means that he knows when to stop. He knows he is, he's, he's on a two drink maximum or a one drink maximum, not a bully, but gentle. He shouldn't be lording over other people, trying to exert his control over other people and violent towards other people. He is free from the love of money. So he does not get himself or allow himself to be snared with the schemes of the devil so that he can gain wealth and riches. He must also manage his household well. So if you go to his house and it's a whole mess, it's all over the place. It's, it is a, I'm not saying it's impeccable, but I mean, if obviously it looks like somebody who clearly doesn't take care of himself, clearly doesn't check his mail, check his email, pay his bills, he should step down. If a pastor is unable to live up to these parameters of an overseer or an elder, uh, then it is time for him to step away for a time. That is told to me from other pastors who have been in ministry for three, four decades is what would disqualify me is sexual immorality, fornication. So if I started sleeping with women in the church or um, if it's discovered that I have this girlfriend that I've been sleeping with and I'm not married to that, that would disqualify me. Um, because the question is, what, what, what is it? What, why are you pursuing this? Why are you pursuing this impure relationship, but then preaching on stage other people to pursue Christ? We have to be pursuing Christ above all else in our own lives if we ever wish to encourage other people to pursue Christ. And it's not that we make mistakes or we stumble, but if there's a pattern, a uh, practice of sinful behavior uh, there is a provision for the flesh given on a regular basis, then yeah. It, it, and, and, we, and we discuss this with our wise counsel and people that are pouring into us, people that uh, are entrusted with the care of us. Every pastor should have somebody that they answer to, somebody that they submit to, somebody that is older than them, more experienced than them, uh, that is able to, or at least comparable experience to them that is able to speak into their lives and is able that knows everything that's going on in their life. And it, if it has been determined by those group of elders, a group of people that pour into this man or this pastor that he needs to step away or step down for a time, then he should submit to their advice. Now with Dr. Tony Evans, we don't know. We do not know. We have no indication of what it could have been. And so we should just leave it at that. Let it not be mistaken. Every single pastor, including myself, everybody can fall into the snare of the devil. And this is why we need to be ever watchful. This is why we need to have other people surrounding us pouring into it. There needs to be, there needs to be people in our lives that are, there needs to be people in our lives that know exactly what's going on with our life and care about us and honestly telling us to step down is an act of love and uh, i know in this worldly culture it would seem telling somebody to stop doing something they're called to do and that they love doing isn't loving but if it's harming you if it's not healthy for you then yes you should be told to step down and so we should never idolize man we should never put anybody on a pedestal except Jesus Christ himself who was placed high on a cross and now sits at the right hand of God. So for Dr. Tony Evans and other pastors that we know that have stepped down because of inappropriate behavior that we know uh, or behavior that they are saying is inappropriate that we don't know, we should pray for them. We should continue to encourage them. Uh, and it doesn't mean that everything that they've done is now discounted um, unless it's some egregious thing. I still haven't been able to read Robbie Zacharias's work since his 
plunge into infamy. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to process. If you are a pastor yourself, or if you're going to a church where a pastor had to step down, um, I hope this gives you some insight into the difficult nature of being a pastor and, and, and how much we have to be like Christ more than anybody else in the congregation. But again, it is a noble task and there's nothing that I would rather do. So prayers out to Dr. Tony Evans. Hope him and his family continue to prosper and heal up during this time. And let me know what you think. When do you think a pastor should be stepping down from ministry? I'd love to dialogue with you down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Download your free ebook from the link in the description. My name is Zachary Carroll, aka Pastor Z. Y'all be cool. Don't forget to read your Bibles. <laughs>